In this video I will continue sharing tips and tricks playing 1v1 games on classic risk map with these settings. To counter attack the Siam slash Indonesia capital strategy, going second I like to use the Easter Australia capital strategy. I let my opponent select the Western Australia and New Guinea territories, so their capital troops would be blocked from me. And if my opponent doesn't have a lot of troops next to this territory, then I select it to be my capital so my opponent couldn't get two extra troops by not capturing Australia. It was such a mistake for my opponent to basically add all of her troops to an isolated capital, because with me capturing a lot of territories and keeping both of her armies blocked, I immediately took over a tremendous advantage. And here is another example, this time my opponent tried to blitz my capital, unsuccessfully though. So with him not capturing that many territories, my situation has become better. I captured Africa, South America and North America, then fortified three troops to the territory of Central America, so it would decrease the white player's chance to invade North America. And with the white player actually failing to invade it, I immediately took over an unstoppable advantage. And when going first I like to add some troops to the Eastern Australia Territory too. So my opponent would be prevented from capturing Australia when going with either Siam or Indonesia strategy. Or that I would just be able to simply capture Australia in case he doesn't add his troops and capital there. And as you can see in this situation I captured Africa and both of the Americas, so the yellow player wouldn't even have as an option to crush my Australian troops. And with the yellow player having his capital on Siam from my continents blocked, he couldn't even invade me into all of my continents. To add some troops to the territory of Eastern Australia could be a very good move, when your opponent is trying to counter your Siam strategy with the Indonesia strategy. As you can see in this game with my opponent putting all of his troops to the territory of Indonesia, I selected my capital to be on the territory of Siam so my opponent would become capital blocked and wouldn't be able to capture a lot of territories. What I noticed could be very important to do going first to guarantee the advantage for yourself, is in the first turn bring down your opponent to fewer than 12 territories or at least close to that, so you would maximize the damage for your opponent's territorial troop bonus, while keep sustaining the territorial advantage for yourself by keep having more territories. So as you can see in this example I reduced the pink player's territories to 10 leaving him with no additional territorial troop bonus. He in his turn bring me down to 19 territories which let me receive 3 extra territorial troop bonus, and then with me reducing his territories number to 17, I've already had the advantage over him with receiving 2 extra troops. So it was clear that the advantage will belong to me with a pink player having to take low success 15 versus 13 capital blitz roll as his best shot. But probably having a wild card he decided to wait for one more turn, and obviously knowing that it would be his last opportunity to win by the capital attack, I paid the attention to the capital safety rather than capturing some more territories. And with the pink player having a set it still was low chances for him to succeed in a 23 versus 19 capital attack. And with the success chance obviously being below 50% the pink player used manual rolls instead of a blitz to have better odds to succeed. A special thanks goes to Grandmaster Sterling for sharing this very valuable tip with me. And here is another example I reduced my opponent's territory number to only 8. While my opponent left me with even 21 territories after his first turn, and with him additionally blocking his capital, I immediately knew that I will win this game as long as I keep my capital safe. But obviously when capturing the territories going first make sure to have enough troops left on your capital, as with your opponent having one big army he could decide to immediately blitz it and get a favorable blitz roll, so sometimes it could be better to capture fewer territories, especially if you already captured a lot of them, but making sure that your opponent wouldn't have good chances to blitz your capital. So actually I didn't feel that great by leaving my capital with only 10 troops in my first turn with my opponent putting his troops to one big army and having the access to blitz it. A very bad strategy going first could be to try immediately blitz your opponent's capital with him basically adding all of his troops to it. So unless you want to have high chances to immediately lose the game, then don't consider doing it. 
don't put all of your troops to a very isolated place one which you would be only able to capture one or a few territories, as then your opponent by capturing a lot of territories and leaving your army blocked, could take over the unstoppable advantage or even completely trap you taking over multiple continents. Just look how beautifully the orange player was trapped in Australia by me. It was so satisfying to get all of those troops and completely wipe him out just in a second turn. When going second don't select your capital to be on a one troop territory, especially if that territory is accessible to your opponent's army, as it might not be more easier for your opponent to take that capital from you and immediately guarantee winning the game by having a proper amount of troops on both of the capitals. When going first you could place your capital in the territory which would block a large army of your opponent's troops. So as you can see in this case the blue player put his army in a territory which isn't looked that bad at the first look, as it has access to capture all of those territories in the way, but the thing was that this army only had access to go to only one way, meaning that this territory was easily capital blockable. By placing my capital on the territory of North Africa which itself is already one of the best territories, I captured a lot of territories, and then put my troops on the capital, to force the blue player take an unfavorable capital blitz roll or if not then be in a very big disadvantage. Though it was a mistake for me to capture those additional African territories, as one thing the blue player was already put to having fewer than 12 territories, and another thing when capital blocking you don't want to leave your capital relatively weak. But as you can see in this case the blue player got a bad blitz roll and I won the game easily. And here is another example with the pink player. By seeing that he put a lot of troops to the territory which is easily capital blockable, I did the same thing once again capturing a bunch of territories and using the capital blocking technique, blocking his army from capturing a lot of territories. And while he wasn't able to capture a lot of territories, still very unfortunately he had a good luck manual rolling my other Australian army, but at the end it still wasn't enough for him, as I was left with even 23 territories, and with me being able to successfully break through both of this captured continents and capture Africa and Europe for myself the pink player was put into insane disadvantage. It was the second round, so even if he had successfully blitzed my capital, then I would have still been able to blitz his two troop Australian army and having the advantage still win the game easily. And here is another example, by seeing that the orange player put all of his troops on Brazil, I selected my capital to be on the territory of North Africa, and after capturing Australia, Africa and Europe, I trapped the orange player beautifully. With an unfavorable blitz roll the game was immediately lost for him and I just simply wiped him out. Then in another game my opponent was actually lucky enough to break through my capital after getting capital blocked by me. But the game basically ended up in the same situation, my opponent was left with basically no troops, so with me having a big advantage there were no chances for my opponent to win once again, 